Hi, you guys. We're starting part four now of the chapter on mechanics of breathing. We're now talking about ventilation perfusion, and I gave a brief intro to this in the last video. What this means is, let me get you a picture here. If you had an alveolus here, and obviously it's got these capillaries, lots of capillaries coming to it, you want to be sure that there's enough air coming to this so that this capillary can pick it up. And you want to be sure that there's enough blood coming here so that the oxygen can can come over to the blood. So in other words, if you don't match the air, volume of air to volume of blood, then this mismatch is going to create a problem because it's going to malfunction, right? It, it's, it has to be such that you have the air and you have the blood and both of those are going to be working together. So that's called ventilation perfusion matching. You want to match the volumes so that you are not wasting time by inflating an alveolus when there's no blood going to that area or bringing blood to an area where the alveolus isn't functioning and there's no air coming to it. So you want to match that. Okay, so carbon dioxide levels in the expired air regulate the bronchioles, regulate ventilation, how much you're going to be breathing. So when carbon dioxide levels goes up, you're going to breathe more deeply and more frequently. So oxygen levels in the interstitial fluids are going to regulate the arterioles. They're going to regulate that perfusion. Do I have to irrigate more or do I irrigate less? So you want to be able to match those two and there's a, a ratio. V over Q ratio is ventilation perfusion. Remember, ventilation is air coming, perfusion is blood coming to that area. So broken down, V is the air that reaches the alveoli, Q is the blood that reaches the alveoli, and you could have a ventilation perfusion scan, and that would evaluate the circulation of air and blood to make sure that this level is correct. So this is matched through pulmonary capillaries. This is the same diagram I was showing you. Let's move on here. What happens if, so it's an if situation, if ventilation decreases. So let's, this is showing ventilation decreasing here in a group of alveoli. Then the partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases, right? Then I'm going to have more carbon dioxide here and the PO2 is going to decrease and the blood that's flowing past those alveoli is not going to get oxygenated, right? So let's say you have some narrowing here and not enough oxygen, not enough air is coming in here. In fact, it's very high in carbon dioxide. So what happens is that this little capillary that was supposed to load up with oxygen comes in blue and leaves blue, and that's no good right? This one here came in blue and left red. So that's sort of a waste, a waste of this blood flow here if it's not picking up any of that new oxygen that's not there. So what happens is that decreased pressure of oxygen around that underventilated alveoli constricts the arteriole. So if we constrict this arteriol here, it's going to divert that blood and more of it is going to end up going to those that are receiving sufficient oxygen. So it diverts that blood to a better ventilated alveolus. Um, this is brilliant because you don't want to be wasting blood or wasting oxygen here. So what are these normal values, VQ? If you had that ratio, so four liters of air per minute is a usual ventilation, and about five liters of blood per minute that are going past um, these alveoli, it would give you a ratio of about 0 0.8. And that's a normal ratio, VQ ratio. Now, let's say you have a value in a patient, once this is measured, that's low. It's 0 0.6. So this value is low. Coming from what? So. I put in some hypothetical numbers. 
Let's say you had three liters of air coming in instead of four, and I put it in red. Three instead of four. You still have your five liters of blood coming past. And this is going to give you this low VQ ratio. So what could be causing less air to be coming in? So an example of this is bronchitis, right? Where everything's sort of closed up, you have less air coming in, and that VQ ratio is off. So when low, when that value is low, you would suspect something like a bronchitis. Back to the normal here of 0 0.8, let's say the value in the patient is high. You, you measure it and it's high. So what's going on here? Well, let's say, hypothetically, this has 4 liters of air per minute coming through, but the liters of blood is low. So this ratio then gives me a higher ratio. What could be happening here? So some sort of embolism, some sort of clot that's not letting in this blood through. So if you look in this diagram, you have the, are the capillaries, and they should be loading up. But if you look at what's going on here, a pulmonary embolism where you would have the accumulation of cells, for example, not allowing blood to flow through. So this is an example where you would see this value being too high. So I summarized it for you. Low VQ usually seen in chronic bronchitis, asthma, acute pulmonary edema, anything that's not getting enough of that oxygen in those alveoli. And a high VQ ratio is indicative of embolism, blood not reaching that area. Uh, more on the clinical focus, and this is another case study that you have on con that you had on congestive heart failure, right? Where the symptoms are shortness of breath, sort of wheezing, uh, a cough that, when very um, uh, advanced, could be foamy and pink from having some blood in it. So this is seen in your case studies. Um, just as a reminder, the right heart is more effective than the left, so that's working fine and it's pumping in levels of, of blood that are adequate, but it accumulates in the pulmonary circulation because the left side of the heart is backing up and it's not doing its job of moving forward. So by backing up, it's sort of stopping that movement of blood. So you would end up with an increased volume in the lung and it increases the pressure. You have too much blood in those capillaries and they start to leak. So that capillary filtration, that too much leakage um, happens and maybe the lymph is unable to drain this because of that excessive leakage and it results in pulmonary edema, fluid accumulating in the lung from a problem in the left side of the heart. Okay, I'm going to stop it there to continue on to airway epithelium for the last of the mini videos, mini lectures. Thanks.